How do you see the importance of bipartisanship in Australia to counter uh, HIV and AIDS? It was very important that in the first decade of the epidemic, we had a Labor government, we had a health minister in Neil Blewett who got it. I and mean, I remember being with Neil when he came to visit San Francisco in, I think, 1984, maybe 1983. Um, and he wanted to meet everybody involved in the response to the epidemic. And he very quickly understood that it had to involve a lot of people. And crucially, when he started f formulating policies, he had the support of a few very influential people in the Liberal Party who were then in opposition, particularly Senator Peter Bohm and Senator Chris Puplik. And they worked very hard to establish the bipartisanship and to stop AIDS becoming a political football. Now, there were moments when this broke down. There were some very nasty incidents. But by and large, when politicians tried to make political capital out of it, it was squashed. And I think um, we maybe we underestimate the importance of the Conservative Party leaders or the Liberal Party leaders, because one of the National Party leaders was actually pretty nasty. But I think that successive Liberal Party leaders were persuaded that this was not something to turn into a partisan issue. Um, I think it's probably true to say Australian politics were a little nicer and more gentle in the 1980s than they are in the present moment. What can be done to keep HIV AIDS on the global political agenda in the future? Uh, that's a very important question and I think it's not being asked enough in the way, I mean I absolutely agree with you that is the question that has to be asked because there is declining interest. I think that outside Africa most governments not unreasonably say, well, this is not for us a major issue. And we have to be realistic. If I were the health minister in many parts of the world, I would also say that this is not the biggest health issue. So the AIDS world has to be more realistic, more willing to understand the number of issues governments have to deal with, but at the same time, better able to connect to people with different priorities. And one of the things I regret is um, in the international AIDS discussions over the last few years, we haven't been really very effective at engaging with the development industries, the development agencies, people working in development, people working on issues like climate change, in thinking about how HIV is part of bigger issues around social justice and development. I mean, too much of the AIDS world has become inward looking and too many of our conferences are people using a lot of rhetoric to convince people who are already convinced. So making speeches at conferences about how we need more resources is not very hard. Finding ways of persuading people who have other priorities that they need to think about HIV and not just marginalise it, I think is the big political challenge. Why is the incidence rate in Australia going up now? I think it's natural. You know, I, I don't get too alarmed by it in the sense that I think we have to accept over time it is very difficult to persuade people that they have to always take precautions. Um, my hunch is that in Australia over the next few years uh, more people will, will go on treatments early and Australia may be one of the places where early treatments uh, will have an impact in lowering the epidemic uh, nationally. I'm much less sure this is going to work globally because for this to happen you have to have uh, trust in the medical system and access to the medical system and by and large we have that here. Uh, most parts of the world that's not the case. Um, so I think that we certainly will, I mean, I think we, we're seeing a spike. We'll probably see a reduction. We'll see other spikes. And I think we have to be realistic. You know, we have had major campaigns here, as in other Western countries, for 30 years to try and stop people smoking. People are still smoking and they're still dying of lung cancer. Um, there is a limit to how far you can change human behaviour. And yes, that doesn't mean we shouldn't 
take it seriously. Of course we should take it seriously, but at the same time we should accept that with the best will in the world, it is very, very difficult to get, to totally do everything that is needed to really reduce uh, infections. Um, so I'm, you know, as I say, I'd be worried to the extent that I want energy and resources to go into this, but I think it is also quite understandable. <laughs>